Good morning, my second graders. Today is Wednesday, April 15th, and we are going to do some reading and math together today. And I hope you remember the book that we started yesterday. I want you to think back to what was happening at the end of chapter three. Do you remember how Annie stepped boldly toward the Pteranodon? And Jack was a little bit more scared. Yesterday I asked you to make a prediction. Let's see if your predictions come true. We're going to start chapter four today, Henry. Jack gasped as Annie held out her hand. Oh, brother, she was always trying to make friends with animals, but this was going too far. Don't get too close to him, Annie, Jack shouted. But Annie touched the pteranodon's crest. She stroked his neck. She was talking to him. What in the world was she saying? Jack took a deep breath. Okay, he would go down too. It would be good to examine the creature. Take notes, like a scientist. Jack started down the rope ladder. When he got to the ground, Jack was only a few feet from the creature. The creature stared at Jack. His eyes were bright and alert. He's soft, Jack, said Annie. He feels like Henry. Jack snorted. He's no dog, Annie. Feel him, Jack, said Annie. Jack didn't move. Don't think, Jack. Just do it. Jack stepped forward. He put out his arm very cautiously. He brushed his hand down the creature's neck. Interesting. A thin layer of fuzz covered the pteranodon's skin. Soft, huh? said Annie. Jack reached into his backpack and pulled out a pencil and a notebook. He wrote, fuzzy skin. What are you doing? asked Annie. Taking notes, said Jack. We're probably the first people in the whole world to ever see a real live pteranodon. Jack looked at the pteranodon again. The creature had a bony crest on top of his head. The crest was longer than Jack's arm. I wonder how smart he is, Jack said. Very smart, said Annie. Don't count on it, said Jack. His brain's probably no bigger than a bean. No, he's very smart. I can feel it, said Annie. I'm going to call him Henry. Jack wrote in his notebook, small brain, question mark. Jack looked at the creature again. Maybe he's a mutant, he said. The creature tilted his head. Annie laughed. He's no mutant, Jack. Well, what's he doing here then? Where is this place, said Jack. Annie leaned close to the pteranodon. Do you know where we are, Henry? She asked softly. The creature fixed his eyes on Annie. His long jaws were opening and closing like a giant pair of scissors. Are you trying to talk to me, Henry? asked Annie. Forget it, Annie, Jack wrote in his notebook. Mouth like scissors? Did we come to a long, did we come to a time long ago, Henry? asked Annie. Is this a place from long ago? Suddenly she gasped, Jack! He looked up. Annie was pointing toward the hill. On top stood a huge dinosaur. Do you think they went to a time long ago? Millions of years ago? Chapter 5. Gold in the Grass. Go, go, said Jack. He threw his notebook into his pack. He pushed Annie toward the rope ladder. Bye, Henry, she said. Go, said Jack. He gave Annie a big push. Quit it, she said but she started up the ladder. Jack scrambled after her. They tumbled into the treehouse. They were panting as they looked out the window at the dinosaur. He was standing on the hilltop, eating flowers off of a tree. Oh man, whispered Jack. We are in a time long ago. 
The dinosaur looked like a huge rhinoceros, only he had three horns instead of one, two long ones above his eyes and one on his nose. He had a big shield-like thing behind his head. Triceratops, said Jack. Does he eat people? whispered Annie. I'll look it up. Jack grabbed the dinosaur book. He flipped through the pages. There, he said. He pointed to a picture of a triceratops. He read the caption. The triceratops lived in the late Cretaceous period. This plant-eating dinosaur weighed over 12,000 pounds. Jack slammed the book shut. Just plants, no meat. Whew. Let's go see him, said Annie. Are you nuts, said Jack. Don't you want to take notes about him, asked Annie. We're probably the first people in the whole world to ever see a real live triceratops. Jack sighed. She was right. Let's go, he said. He shoved the dinosaur book into his pack. He slung it over his shoulder and started down the ladder. On the way down, Jack stopped. He called up to Annie. Just promise you won't pet him. I promise. Promise you won't kiss him. I promise. Promise you won't talk to him. I promise. Promise you won't... Go, go, she said. Jack went. Annie followed. When they stepped off the ladder, the pteranodon gave them a kind look. Annie blew a kiss at him. Be back soon, Henny. Henry, she said cheerfully. Shh, said Jack. And he led the way through the ferns, slowly and carefully. When he reached the bottom of the hill, he kneeled behind a fat bush. Annie knelt beside him and started to speak. Shh. Jack put his finger to his lips. Annie made a face. Jack peeked out at the triceratops. The di dinosaur was incredibly big, bigger than a truck. He was eating the flowers off a magnolia tree. Jack slipped his notebook out of his pack. He wrote, eats flowers. Annie nudged him. Jack ignored her. He studied the triceratops again. He wrote, eats slowly. Annie nudged him hard. Jack looked at her. Annie pointed to herself. She walked her fingers through the air. She pointed to the dinosaur. She smiled. Was she teasing? She waved at Jack. Jack started to grab her. She laughed and jumped away. She fell into the grass in full view of the triceratops. Get back, whispered Jack. Too late. The big dinosaur had spotted Annie. He gazed down at her from the hilltop. Half of a magnolia flower was sticking out of his mouth. Oops, said Annie. Get back, Jack shouted at her. He looks nice, Jack. Nice? Watch out for his horns, Annie. No, he's nice, Jack. Nice? But the triceratops just gazed calmly down at Annie. Then he turned and looped away down the side of the hill. Bye, said Annie. She turned back to Jack. See, she grunted, but he wrote in his notebook, nice. Come on, let's look around some more, said Annie. As Jack started after Annie, he saw something glittering in the tall grass. He reached out and picked it up. A medallion, a gold medallion. A letter was engraved on the medallion, a fancy M. Oh man, someone's come here before us, Jack said softly. So as a reader, do you have a question like I do? I'm wondering what the M stands for on the medallion. Let's read one more chapter. Chapter six is called Dinosaur Valley. Annie, look at this, Jack called. Look what I found. Annie had gone up to the hilltop. She was busy picking a flower from the magnolia tree. Annie, look, a medallion. 
Do you see the first part of medallion is metal? So a medallion is a round piece that can be worn like a metal. But Annie wasn't paying attention to Jack. She was staring at something on the other side of the hill. Oh, wow, she said. Annie! Here's the picture. Clutching her magnolia flower, she took off down the hill. Annie, come back, Jack shouted. But Annie had disappeared. I'm going to kill her, Jack muttered. He stuffed the gold medallion into his jeans pocket. Then he heard Annie shriek. <gasps> Annie? Jack heard another sound as well, a deep bellowing sound like a tuba. Jack, come here, Annie called. Annie! Jack grabbed his backpack and raced up the hill. When he got to the top, he gasped. The valley below was filled with nests, big nests made out of mud. And the nests were filled with tiny dinosaurs. I've got to show you that picture again. Annie was crouching next to one of the nests, and standing over her was a gigantic duck billed dinosaur. Don't panic. Don't move, said Jack. He stepped slowly down the hill toward Annie. The huge dinosaur was towering above Annie, waving her arms, making her tuba sound. Jack stopped. He didn't want to get too close. He knelt on the ground. Okay, move toward me, slowly, he said. Annie started to stand up. Don't stand. Crawl, said Jack. Clutching her flower, Annie crawled toward Jack. The duck-billed dinosaur followed her, still bellowing. Annie froze. Keep going, Jack said softly. Annie started crawling again. Jack inched farther down the hill until he was just an arm's distance from Annie. He reached out and grabbed her hand. He pulled Annie toward him. Stay down, he said. He crouched next to her. Bow your head. Pretend to chew. Chew? Yes, I read that's what you do if a mean dog comes at you. She's no dog, Jack, said Annie. Just chew, said Jack. Jack and Annie both bowed their heads and pretended to chew. Soon the dinosaur grew quiet. Jack raised his head. I don't think she's mad anymore, he said. Thanks, Jack, for saving me, said Annie. You have to use your brain, said Jack. You can't just go running to a nest of babies. There's always a mother nearby. Annie stood up. Annie! Too late. Annie held out her magnolia flower to the dinosaur. I'm sorry I made you worry about your babies, she said. The dinosaur moved closer to Annie. She grabbed the flower from her. She reached for another. No more, said Annie. The dinosaur let out a sad tuba sound. But there are more flowers up there, Annie said. She pointed to the top of the hill. I'll get you some. Annie hurried up the hill. Are you starting to realize that Annie is very daring and she's not afraid to take risks? The dinosaur waddled after her. Jack quickly examined the babies. Some were crawling out of their nests. Where were the other mothers? Jack took out the dinosaur book. He flipped through the pages. He found a picture of some duck-billed dinosaurs. He read the caption. The Anatosauruses lived in colonies. While a few mothers babysat the nests, others hunted for food. See, these dark black words are always giving you facts. So there must be more mothers close by. Hey, Jack, Annie called. Jack looked up. Annie was at the top of the hill, feeding magnolia flowers to the giant Anatosaurus. She's nice too, Jack, Annie said. But suddenly, the Anatosaurus made her terrible tuba sound. Annie crouched down and started to chew. The dinosaur barged down the hill. Oh, what's going to happen? 
She seemed afraid of something. Jack put the book down on top of his pack. He hurried to Annie. I wonder why she ran away, said Annie. We were starting to be friends. Jack looked around. What he saw in the distance almost made him throw up. An enormous, ugly monster was coming across the plain. He was walking on two big legs and swinging a long, thick tail and dangling two tiny arms. He had a huge head and his jaws were wide open. Even from far away, Jack could see his long, gleaming teeth. Read with me. Tyrannosaurus Rex, whispered Jack. And that's where we'll stop for today. So let's look at your matrix. It tells you today for reading to watch the YouTube video to hear the continuation of Dinosaurs Before Dark. That's what you just did. But this part is what you need to do next. Tell a family member about the book so far. What would you do if you were with Jack and Annie? So I want you to find someone in your family that you can talk to about the story and tell them what's happened so far and what you would do if you were with Jack and Annie. So now it is time um, to take a quick look at math from last week. Remember, I asked you to do number one and fill in the tally chart. I just want to show you what it should look like. And I've realized that I shouldn't use marker because it bleeds through. So just like in school, I now have my pencil ready for math today. So for you to know what to do for math today, you need to look at your matrix and it says do independent practice numbers two through five on pages 537 to 538 in your math packet. Complete the complete the right math at the bottom of the page. So I have found that page that you need to do, and since this is independent, you're going to work on your own today. You use this tally chart and you make a picture graph. Look at the key. You can just use circles or stars, whatever you would like to draw. Do the same thing with number three. Turn it over. Now we have brain builders, and you know those can be a little bit tricky. So I want to give you a little bit of a, bit of a hint. For this brain builder, notice that Lillian asked 10 people their favorite flower. So we're going to draw a circle for each flower. When you do that, remember you can only draw 10. Look at the information you know. One said tulips. The same number of people said daisies and carnations. So daisy and carnation <coughs> Excuse me, those have to have the same number of circles. And then it says five said roses. So you could go ahead and fill in the five for roses right away. You could fill in the one for tulips right away. And then figure out how many more circles you have to draw to get to ten. And make daisy and carnation be the same number. You can figure that out. Okay, here's another brain builder. A school asked 15 students their favorite subject. Three students said science, and three said reading. So fill, fill in what you know right away. Remember, it's 15 total, so you could use circles again. So after you fill those in, it says one less person said art than math. So math has to be one more than art. Art has to be one less than math. And I will show you the answers tomorrow. Don't forget to do the right math section. And in the right math, you are to explain how picture graphs can be more helpful than tally charts. And I want you to write a complete sentence down here, maybe even two or three. Make sure you use capital letters and a period for each sentence and spell as best as you can. And I will go over those answers with you tomorrow. So that concludes what you need to do for reading and math today. 
hopefully um, it'll be a nicer day out this afternoon and you'll get some time to play. And I will be back tomorrow. Be sure to tune in to hear the exciting ending to Dinosaurs at Dark. Dinosaurs Before Dark. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.